Hello, Dragonfly enthusiasts, and welcome to another episode of Essentials. My name is Jana, and today I will be showing you how to train your model and create your ground truth. This is part two of how to use Segmentation Wizard. After preparing your data and cropping it, that we showed it in part one, you should start by right-clicking on it and selecting Segmentation Wizard. When you do so, they will ask you to select a model. We're going to start fresh, so we're going to start without a model. We will have the acquisition plane in front of us, or the image plane. I showed you in part one, if this is not your preferable axe to work with, you can do an axis transformation. Now in the window, you will see a similar workspace as the main window with less tools. Segmentation Wizard works with frames, so to be able to give the ground truth, which is the reference that the model will need to train, you have to choose an area, preferably that has all the classes or phases that you are looking for. So, when you click on the plus button right here, it will add a frame for you. And then we will have to adjust the window leveling a bit so we could be able to see our stuff even better. You can play with your window leveling as much as you want. And when you create your frame, you will have your multi ROI selected. Or you will have a multi ROI that will be shown here. And one important thing that you have to keep in mind is that it's good practice to make a frame super small on the first try so you could see what your model is going to come up with. So try your best to start with a small frame and then gradually add more frames after you train your model. The second step would be to add classes, as many classes as you want. Here I have five phases, which are my cathode, my anode, my collectors, my casing, and my background. So I'm going to click on my add button right here, add multiple classes, and add three more. It's also good practice to rename all of your classes. So we're going to call it background. We're going to go for casing and then you gradually name all of them such as cathode, anode and collectors in the end. We have plenty of tools that will help you out create your ground truth. So right here, if you scroll down, you will see the brushes and you will also see the ROI tools. The first step is to select the class that you want to label. You zoom in, or you can keep it unzoomed, and you click on the brush. We're going to start with a full brush so I could show you how it looks like. You simply click on the left control on your keyboard and the left click of your mouse, and you paint. It's important to note that Dragonfly supports sparse labeling. That means you do not need to label all of your frame. It suffices you to do streaks on your phases. You select a phase and create a streak and move on to the next class. So here, it's, it's good to show you the local O2 and the upper one. So this is a local O2 brush, which is which what will do is that it will catch everything. It will pick up everything of high intensity because I chose upper. And if I select lower, it will pick up everything that is of low intensity. I'm interested in coloring or labeling my casing. So what I am going to do is that I'm going to click on upper and I am going to make sure that my circle right here or my brush has two phases in the same brush. So when I color, it's only going to pick up whatever is of high intensity. One more thing is that you can also select the lower brush if you want to, if you want to color something that is of low intensity. Now I am going to take my cathode and I'm going to keep my upper brush or I can go for my grid, which is right here. That's what we call the grid tool, which is smart. And it's like literally coloring a puzzle. You simply click on the left click of the mouse and you go ahead and pass a new color and you pass and you click with your left click. And then after that, for the anode, you can simply do it using a brush or you can go with a segment anything model. Now that's a very good way to show you the segment anything model. I'm going to take the cathode. I'm going to load the model if it has been already downloaded. I have previously made a video. You can watch the tutorial on how to use it. I'm going to click on point and click 
and then I'm going to zoom in because it's zoom dependent and click on here. Well, that did not work as expected, but it's okay. I can just click on this one and it will select. Now, for the anode, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to color. And for the collectors, I am also going to use my upper brush and just simply pass by. I'm going to finish the ground truth and come back. Now my ground truth is ready. As I mentioned previously, you have no obligation to segment all of it. You can just simply do some streaks, but for the purpose of demonstration, I am segmenting all of my frame. Now the next step is to train. And when I want to train, I can simply click on train on this button right here. However, I want to see how my model is progressing on the spot. So I am going to scroll through my data and then choose an area click on plus and use it as a visual feedback to see how my model is progressing. I will simply double click and then select on monitoring and then click on train. Now it will ask me which retrain by Dragonfly team I'm going to choose. Well, it's good to select the default one, which is mainly if you click on the plus button right here, it's going to show you that this one is 2D. I want the one which is 2.D because it will help me out since my data is in 3D. I'm going to click on continue and it will generate my model. Once it generates my model, the training window will pop up. And once it does, the first thing that you have to take a look at once the first epoch is ready is two things. The first one that you're going to see is the graph on the left and the visual feedback on the right. What you only care about when you look at the graph is this curve right here, which is called the validation loss. If you want, the validation loss would measure quality, which is the difference between the ground truth that you have created and the prediction of the model. So what you care about is that this magenta curve decreases because that means that the difference between the prediction of the model and the ground truth will decrease. Meanwhile, on the right side, you will see your visual feedback and how your model is progressing live or on the moment. So you can also turn off the inference to see your data or actually crease it to see how your model is progressing. Okay, the model has finished training and now, as you can see, I can simply move and scroll past my epochs to see how my model was actually improving. And when I pass through my epochs, I can see that this one became stable. So basically, it found the best model. Now, once I close the training history, I will be able to see the prediction of my model and how it looks like. So if I click on this frame, for example, what it will show me, my ground truth, and it will show me my prediction, which I found pretty nice for a training like this. It took around 15 minutes to finish training. And it's not a lot. So um, after that, what we can do, we're going to have to save or publish our model. Before we do so, I'm going to show you that we can also add more frames to train our model if our model did not respond as much as we want. So it's important to keep your frame, the first one that you have created, and do not touch it because it's your ground truth. So you can take the monitoring frame that does not get into the training because whenever it's mixed, that means it's involved in the training. However, when it's monitoring, you do not need to label it and you can switch it into a mixed one. So with the help of this arrow right here, we're going to transfer the prediction of the model to the ground truth that we have. So once we click this, the prediction of the model that we had will become the ground truth and then we can retrain again we can train the model for it to improve we can do some changes you can train you can correct and then you can train again so it is the same way as creating a ground truth however you're adding a new frame but don't forget to switch it into mixed and then you can simply add another frame and then select it as a monitoring one that way you have created an extra one and then you have also created a monitoring one, which is different than the first one. 
Now it's time for you to export or publish your model so you could be able to use it. The next step that you have to do it is simply click on exit. And once you click on exit, you will, it, this will pop up, which is publish models. You are going to make sure to click or check this box right here. What will it give you is that it will give you the pre-trained and all the parameters of the model, but you do not want to publish it as this much so you could keep track of it. So I personally like to start with a year so I could filter it later on. And then I will start with the whole day and I can just simply call it battery. And then I will publish my selected model and then I'm going to click on OK. So segmentation wizard will close and then I will have my session right here and I can reopen it too. Now, what's important for me is to show you how to apply your model. When you want to apply your model, you simply have to click on your data set and then go to segment tab. When you click on the drop down menu, it will be categorized with the amount of classes or the number of classes. So once you select your model from the drop down menu, you are able to either create a preview is right here once you create a preview it will show you the model and then it will show you the prediction of the model on one slice only or you can simply click on segment and then apply it on the full data set and that's how you train your model create your ground truth and apply it thank you so much for watching